Being a Roman in 88 BC in what is Western modern day Turkey was a very dangerous thing. And here's why. I'll start with a bit of context about all of this. First of all, again, another fantastic map from Rome Total War. God, I love that game. And this is the western part of what is modern day Turkey, Anatolia, call it what you want. And you can make out a couple of cities. You can make a Pergamum up there. And then you can make out what is to be Ephesus, which I visited and is wonderful just there. Now, this was a site which Rome had recently acquired, and it acquired it in quite a bizarre way. And that's because in 133 BC, the king Attalus III of Pergamum died, and he left his kingdom to Rome. He didn't have any heirs. And Rome kept most of it, and this formed the Roman province of Asia. This was a good thing, but it was also a bad thing, because it was a good thing you had lots more land, you could tax, you could get resources, all the things Rome loved doing. But it also had borders. It meant that you were also now brought into the wider political geography of that area. And there was one individual who was certainly to announce himself to Rome, Mithridates VI of Pontus. Mithridates was a fascinating character. In fact, I'll probably try and do something about him or a few things about him. In any case, he was the king of Pontus and Pontus was effectively northern shores of what is Turkey and he started expanding it to the south, and this soon brought him into sort of diplomatic discussions with Rome. Long story short, things did not go well. It didn't go well because Rome did what it did best, which is basically antagonise everyone. They sent over an ambassador called Aquilus, and Aquilus himself wasn't too much of a problem, but his father had been in charge here, and his father basically was hugely unpopular. He'd managed to rip off practically everyone and become incredibly unpopular. Aquilus, without any authorization from the Roman Senate launched a war on Mithridates, or at least attacked him, and he was defeated, and it went very badly for Aquilus. He was caught, and then had molten gold poured down his throat, and that apparently was largely due to what his father had been like in terms of his greed when he'd been there. So yeah, not a particularly pleasant way to go. But then Mithridates turned it up to 11. We don't know the mechanics of it all exactly, we just know it happened. But one day in the spring or summer of 88 BC, the entire province rose up against any one Roman there. Men, women and children met often quite grisly ends. I can't go into too much detail here, and perhaps it's a good idea that I don't. But essentially what occurred was a wide-scale massacre. In places such as Ephesus and Pergamon, Men, women and children ran into the temples to seek sanctuary, but that didn't work. They were either dragged from the statues and dispatched or, or shot with arrows in one instance. Even slaves who were thought to be Roman, perhaps they spoke Latin, were included in all of the butchery. In terms of numbers, it varies. Appian, who wrote about this, recorded that it was 80,000 victims, but Plutarch, writing later, recorded that it was upwards of around 150,000. And perhaps we can side with a lower number, as that's thought to have been the more probable. But even if it was only half of that, and that's a point that Adrian Mare makes in an excellent book, The Poison King, which is about Mithridates and worth a read, by the way. Even if it was, and I say only 40,000, that's a huge number. We don't know how it happened. We don't know how the word got out. But it was a kind of red wedding type scenario gone very big. Next video, I'm going to do something nicer.